Hi everybody, it's Mark Lawrenson here from Sydney Astrology School. And thanks for joining me as we look at October 2023. And it's an eclipse month. So before we get stuck into the eclipses and what they all mean, I just want to talk about uh, uh, how much attention we tend to put on eclipses and their importance. Now, they come around every five and a half to six months. So they're not all that rare. And I want to actually say that we tend to put a lot of emphasis on eclipses, uh, particularly when most of us aren't going to be affected by them. And what I mean by that is eclipses are only going to be potent if they're in a strong aspect, particularly conjunction to a planet in your chart. And I'm talking about the luminaries, the sun and the moon, uh, and the personal planets, uh, which are Mercury, Venus, and Mars. So if you have uh, an eclipse in a conjunction to any of those planets, they are going to be a big deal. And we can talk about that. But if they're not, if they're in, even if they're in a conjunction with an outer planet, they're going to actually uh, play out for sure. But I want to say that most of us aren't going to have uh, eclipses affecting our planets in our chart. And so therefore, we're going to actually move through an eclipse or whole eclipse time without it really uh, coming into our lives much at all. Okay. So I wanted to uh, get that out first uh, before we talk about the eclipses for the month. So the two eclipses we're having in October are a solar eclipse, October 14th or 15th, depending on where you are in the world. And that's going to be a 21 Libra. And then we get the lunar eclipse two weeks later. Uh, that's going to be October 28th or 29th. And that's going to be at five degrees of Taurus. Okay. Now, as I said, if you've got a planet, particularly a luminary or a personal planet, anywhere near, and I would say within two degrees of uh, 21 Libra or five Taurus, you are going to be affected by these eclipses. And the effect won't actually be happening on the day or the week. Uh, eclipses, the, uh, the effect of an eclipse can last a year, up to a year, sometimes even more, meaning that in that year after the eclipse, it is still vibrationally uh, involved in your life in some kind of way. Now, eclipses have a feeling of new beginnings. And it's usually around uh, something coming uh, to a close or something having to be released in some kind of way. So when you think about an eclipse, when you think about a solar eclipse, we're talking about the moon and the shadow of the moon going over the sun for a short period of time and then revealing itself again. When you're talking about a lunar eclipse, it's the shadow of us. It's the shadow of the earth going over the moon for a couple of hours and then revealing itself again. So there is something kind of closing down and there is something opening up. Now, I always find when I get affected by eclipses, they're usually quite big years for me. And I usually start on something very, very different or very, very new. And I usually have to say goodbye to something. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be scary. A lot of people think, oh, my God, having to say goodbye to something doesn't sound great. I want to actually say, usually it's the best thing that can ever happen to you. <laughs> because actually coming into a new version of yourself or a new way of doing something or a new way of thinking about things or heading in a brand new direction is exactly what you need when you're in experiencing an eclipse. And maybe you've gone as far as you need to go with something. And that's very, very uh, strong with a, a lunar eclipse. Because a lunar eclipse is a full moon. And so it's taking everything uh, to, uh, to fruition. It's taking everything to the pointy end. A solar eclipse is always going to be a new moon. And so the new moon is always going to be opening up something brand new, starting something, initiating something anyway. So you're getting the feeling of the, the new moon and the full moon with solar and lunar eclipses as well. Now, eclipses are always going to be very close in conjunction with the lunar nodes themselves. 
they're going to be uh, uh, with, a, with a north node or with a south node, okay? And so when we're looking at a solar eclipse, we're going to have the sun and the moon conjunct a node. And in this particular case, the sun and the moon are going to be in a wide conjunction uh, with the south node. So it is a south node lunar eclipse, a solar eclipse. And so there is more of a, of a feeling of having to, to let something uh, go or detach from something in some kind of way, or actually feel that that's in the past. You know, that's a, a south node. So when we're looking at the, uh, uh, the uh, lunar eclipse, which is coming up at the end of the month, we're talking about that uh, as a north node. Okay, and so the North Node lunar eclipse is actually moving us into new territory because there is something that's come to a point in our lives where we really start to have to make decisions about where we want to go next. Okay, so as I said, the solar eclipse uh, happening on the 13th and the, or the 14th of October is at 21 Libra. So I want to say, look at your own charts and actually find if, if anything is conju in conjunction with 21 Libra. Now, there might be some people actually going, well, I've got a planet in opposition, or I've got a planet in square. I'm going to say, take those into consideration. But I really, really want to emphasize the conjunction. I think the conjunction is by far the strongest. I'm not saying that an opposition or a square isn't going to be affected. It will be affected, but it'll be affected in a, in a slightly um, less potent way than a conjunction would. Now Libra, the sign of Libra, it's a very, it's a very uh, relationship oriented sign, isn't it? And so you might want to go down the road of new beginnings or things starting all over again, or maybe new people coming into your life. The relationships in your life might actually go through a renewal of sorts. If you've got a planet, very, very close to 21 degrees of Libra. Check out what that planet is. Whatever that planet is, is going to give you some information on what it could be. So Libra energy is always going to be about balance. It's always going to be about harmony. It's always going to be about negotiation. It's always going to be about finding middle ground. So there might be areas in your life where you might actually become into connection, where you might be uh, partnering. Uh, there might be uh, some uh, some areas where you might have to meet halfway. There might be some areas, not only in personal relationships, but in friendships, in business relationships, that might come in touch with this. But it will be it will be a very people oriented year for you. And I want to say there will be changes involved in that for sure. Okay. So the one that comes up at the end of the month is a lunar eclipse. It's a north node lunar eclipse. Um, it's moving us into new territory. Um, the node is actually in Aries and the eclipse is happening in Taurus, um, but they are still within 18 degrees. And so uh, that's what we look at when we're looking at eclipses. Now, Taurus is a very security conscious sign, as we know. And so uh, there might be areas to do uh, with coming to a point in our lives where we have to start making decisions uh, on the level of our, uh, of our worth and our value. Um, money may come into this. There might be times uh, where you might have to look at what you're doing with money, how you're using money, how you're valuing your money. That might come into it. New ways of making money could come into it as well. But I want to really, really hone in on and emphasize the whole idea of self-worth and self-value. I think this is a really important time for us to really buckle down and make some major changes around the way we value ourselves and what we're worth and be able to come into a place of actually realizing that maybe along the line we've been playing small or we've been, you know, we've been lowering, lowering our price where now we should actually come into a place now of actually going, no, I'm worth more than that on all levels not just as far as payment is concerned, but with friends, with family, uh, with partners, you know, with people in general, where we've allowed other people to maybe control us or take power over us in some kind of way. 
and we need to actually start to make decisions, strong decisions around where we're going to, what we're going to do with that and where we're going to take that next. So I'm going to quickly just show you all the charts of the, uh, of the actual eclipses, okay? So that's the, that's the solar eclipse chart, okay? Don't worry about the houses, everybody, uh, because the houses, they're going to fall into different houses depending on where you are in the world, okay? Don't worry about the houses at all. But can you see the solar eclipse is the conjunction of the sun and the moon at 21 degrees of Libra, okay? And what I want to do here is I just want to have a look at any other planets that are involved in the eclipse itself. And so we see Mercury is involved. See how Mercury is at 17 degrees? So it is conjunct, the eclipse. And then over on the other side, we have Chiron opposite Mercury at 17 Aries in opposition to Mercury, um, in opposition to the eclipse as well. And so we might want to bring in those planets or their energies into the eclipse and what the eclipse is about. So the new moon eclipse, as I said, is opening into new territory. It is a south node, as I said before, too. So there might be a letting go of something or a releasing of something. Mercury is always telling me that there's something new to learn. There's something new to understand. Chiron is always telling me that there's some healing involved in this. There's some form of personal healing involved. So maybe there's something about having to speak up. Maybe there's something about being heard. Maybe there's something about learning something new that you can take forward in some kind of way. Maybe there could be something that you have been looking at or learning or realizing that you don't need this anymore. Uh, you've done what you have to do with it and you can pass it on, okay? You can move on to something completely different. The healing tells me that there's something on the level of the information that you're taking in might actually be really, really good for you on the level of moving you forward, not just health-wise, but also on the level of becoming a little bit more aware of what's going to be good for you and what's not. The information that's actually going to take you into new territory that's actually going to be a healing force for you, not just physically, but maybe emotionally, maybe psychologically, maybe spiritually, you know, all those kind of things would come into it as well, okay? So let's look at the eclipse at the end of the month, okay? So here we are, this is the, uh, this is the lunar eclipse that's happening October 28th or 29th. The lunar eclipses are always full moons. And so there's the full moon with the sun in Scorpio, opposite the moon in Taurus. There's the node in Aries, uh, 11 degrees away, out of sign, but it is 11 degrees away. So it's a north node uh, eclipse in Taurus. So as I said, don't worry about the houses because the houses, they're gonna fall in different houses depending on where you are in the world. But, the, uh, but this is an interesting one because look at the planets that are involved. Mercury is involved again. You know, Mercury is in opposition um, to the eclipse. When you're looking at a lunar eclipse, everybody, you're going to be looking at the moon because it's the moon that's getting eclipsed. So there's the moon at five degrees of Taurus. Mercury is in opposition. Uh, but the big one is Jupiter. Everyone see that? Jupiter at 11 degrees of Taurus within six degrees of the eclipse. So we have Jupiter opposite Mercury, and we also have Mars involved in opposition as well. So this has got a feistiness about it, don't you think? Um, people who have uh, planets at uh, five degrees of Taurus have got these, this uh, zing happening. It's an effervescent kind of feeling. Uh, Jupiter's opening the gates to something. Jupiter's offering them more of something. Now, over on the other side, Mercury and Mars is fueling them up. They're both in Scorpio. Mercury and Mars is fueling them up. Now, there might be something on the level again of, of somebody coming into a, a, a place of being able to, uh, to make, again, make big decisions around 
uh, where they're going in life as far as they might have been take going down the same road for quite a while or quite a while and realizing now that uh, that uh, things have come to a head and I need to do something about it and so we've got the Jupiter energy that's giving the giving them the confidence or giving them the inspiration or giving them the get up and go or giving them the faith to actually step out and be or do what they want to do uh, without any restraints, without any hold, you know, without any uh, uh, any hold uh, back. <laughs> and then over the other side, we've got a feisty combination in Scorpio that's kind of being the propeller of sorts. And so we have Mars in Scorpio, which is driven by desire, basically. And we have Mercury in Scorpio, which is very much about a part of us that really wants to to take things uh, to a mental edge. It wants to be brave mentally. It wants to actually take our minds into particular areas that maybe we haven't ventured into before. And so there could be something on the level of trying something completely new. It could be learning. It could have something to do with learning. It could have something to do with travel. It could have something to do with opening your minds to a new understanding of things or new ideas. Um, it could come into the work environment as well, depending on where it's going to be landing, of course. And so, you know, you might want to have a look at all different ways of being able to see, because it will play out. It will play out in your year if you have a planet very, very close to five degrees of Taurus. Now, I'm just going to quickly show you what I mean, because there might be a few people watching who are actually going, what do you mean by the eclipse um, being part of my natal chart? So I'll show you how an eclipse can affect a natal chart, okay? So here is a person's natal chart. This is a random person. It's nobody in particular. But this person has got the sun in, Tor in uh, Libra at 20 degrees of Libra. So this is their natal chart, okay? So I'm putting the first chart that we we saw, I'm putting uh, the solar eclipse, the one that's happening on the 13th or 14th, against their natal chart by in a bywheel, okay? So there we have the natal chart in the middle. And can everyone see the solar eclipse at 21 on the outer wheel at 21 degrees of Libra, bang smack on the natal sun now this person's got a natal sun in their 10th house so this person you might want to say has come onto the planet uh to get out into the world and have a public face to contribute out there in in the world to to have a mission of sorts um maybe uh achievement and uh, uh an accomplishment is important to this person uh, our outer achievement. And so here is the eclipse, bang smack, on their sun. And so here's a renewal of sorts, or a change, or something restarting, or something possibly rebooting in that particular area. It is Libra, so it might have a lot to do with people, and the people that he works with, or maybe the per people, uh, the work could actually be people-oriented. But this person is going to go through some form of change, some form of regeneration, some form of renewal in the in his role, in his role in life, or his work in the world. And here we have Chiron in opposition, meaning that there could be some kind of healing for him on the level of what he might have to look at as far as family is concerned, or the past or the home life, or his childhood. There might be something there that he might have to look at that could have something to do with the change as well. Now, I'm not going to get too, too caught up in this because it'll turn into a reading. I just wanted to show you this as an example. Now, I'm going to use the same chart, and I'm going to put the second, uh, I'm going to put the second eclipse, uh, the lunar eclipse that we're having at the very end of the month against his chart as well. Okay, 
So everyone see the opposition of the sun and the moon on the outer wheel? That's the eclipse. And there's the moon at five degrees of Taurus. Okay. He has nothing in his natal chart in the fifth house, nothing in Taurus in the fifth house. So I want to actually say, and nothing really in strong aspect. Um, he has Mercury again in opposition, but that's about it. That's about it. So as far as a conjunction is concerned, he doesn't have the, uh, the moon, uh, the, the eclipse moon in a conjunction with anything. So I want to actually say that the second eclipse is not going to affect him because of that. Now, if you uh, are not going to be affected by either of the eclipses, but you still think uh, the eclipse has to uh, mean something to me, <laughs> and if you want to go down that road, I want to say whatever house it will fall in, your house, in, in this case, it is falling into uh, this gentleman's, um, I've made this person a man. Um, uh, it is, it's falling into this gentleman's fifth house. Can everyone see it? Can everyone see that? It's not going to overly affect it because it's not making a conjunction. But what I want to say is the fifth house, which is the house of creativity and play, uh, it's the house of children, it's a house of all the all areas of self-expression. You know, it's the house of us being able to come into a place of being able to feel um, love and fun and be able to, to feel joy. That's what the fifth house is, is basically all about. So maybe, maybe in a very, very, you know, uh, kind of backdroppy, whitewash kind of way that that particular area of his life may be affected minimally but i want to underscore minimally because um it's only going to be affecting really uh affecting people who have a conjunction to that moon that fifth, the uh moon being in, at five degrees people are always interested in orbs i like to keep my orbs relatively tight you know when it comes to um when it comes to eclipses so I would say within two or three degrees of the eclipse is enough, okay? So there we go. That's the eclipses for October. So I hope that you got something from, uh, from my little clip and I will see you all again next month.